And joining us on the phone line is Marius Franz. And a very good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us here on Morning Prime. Uh, the ANC has suspended you uh, for five years, saying you used your office for the purpose of attempting to obtain a sexual favor and making statements which brought the ANC in disre into disrepute. Uh, you have been quoted as saying you intend to appeal, but you did not attend the hearing. Won't that have uh, prejudiced your chances? I think, I think it's important that we know what's the detail of the issue. One, you would have seen that I've been <coughs> two charges. The one was actually that I said publicly that the integrity committee process was fatally flawed. And secondly, that I said that Comrade Gwedi Mantasha has in fact been dishonest when he said the city press has put a, a fabricated document um, to the public in, the, in July. Now, I want to re-emphasize that issue. Ja Jackson Mantembu and others can attack the president of our country and the president of the ANC, but it's fine as long as he's, there is a self-serving attitude towards um, Mantash. So that's a problem that we've got, inconsistency. We've also got a problem that all those that the last couple of months or year has gone for a hard strategy on regime change against President Zuma, all those that speak out publicly, that write publicly as members and leaders of the ANC, it's fine, they will not be dealt with as long as if they are with, in support of Comrade Mantash. Now, I want to say that I will never keep quiet when the, the office of the SG is being abused for factional interest. And the, the message really to the ANC which I'm a member and the leader of the ANC because I will appeal. And whilst I'm appealing, I will still be recognized as the leader of the ANC. Is for, faction, for the ANC to live, factions must die. You can't have an SG. That five years or six years ago, when there was an issue of Julius Malema, then there's immediate, for example, a suspension of a few years. I think it was five years, ironically, on the same day. Comrade Franzman differs in the build-up to 2017 conference with Comrade Mantash. There is a, there's an attack. Now, I don't believe Comrade Mantash was part of the plotting of this thing in January. What I do believe, he, he saw it as political opportunism afterwards. Now, let me explain why. One, in July, I've asked a few times for documents. I had to go to the High Court to get documents, which I read in the papers, but was not granted to me. How fair and how administrative justice is that? On the, in August, on the 17th, I've written to Comrade Mantash asking him for all the documents, the attachments, because he's actually in contempt of court. The court has ruled he must give the documents. He didn't give all the attachments. He only gave the, the executive summary of the integrity committee report, but he didn't give the attachments. I wrote to him. He wrote back saying to me that we, we will get all the relevant documents before the disciplinary committee starts. On the 27th of, 22nd of September, I've issued 45 questions um, to, 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 to the leadership, the, the SG's office, the national presenter, amongst others, the minutes, the resolutions, and all the attachments around the integrity committee. The minutes and the resolutions of the NWC that has said I must go to a DC. What did they give back? Nothing for at least a month. Somewhere three weeks ago, I wrote back to the national presenter. We then requested them to submit the documents because I want to go to the disciplinary committee. Then on the 27th or 26th of October, they wrote back, giving me essentially nothing. What did they give me? They gave me the integrity committee report that I've already got when I went to court to get it. They gave me the letters that I wrote to Comrade SG and the letters that he responded that I've already got. What they didn't give me was the minutes, the attachments, the resolutions. Why? Why is the SG's office hiding those things? Why do they refuse it after he said he will definitely give it to me? That's where the devil lies in that detail. So quite clearly there was an agenda. On the issue of Vainant, I want to put on record Vainant is a liar, attention seeker. She's completely used the last few months, I think, as a hired gun in the process to politically deal with Comrade Franzman. Now, yes, in September of last year, the key question is why does this all have happened? In September of last year, at the National Executive Committee, I rose, I stood up, and I said, I've, we've uncovered in the province an attempt of few business people in Gauteng, plus, and we've named them, plus a group of people in the Western Cape 
that came out of a meeting and resolved two issues. One, to take down President Zuma at the National General Council of October last year. Two, to make sure that Comrade Fransman is dislodged from his position. I can understand why. Now, what did we see happened afterwards? We saw the most vicious attack on Fransman in the last couple of months, completely strange. So that's the hard reality. So yes, I will appeal. But let me also say, one of the things, one of the reasons why this attack is so brutal is because in September last year, under my leadership, we had to expel a comrade that was found guilty in a court of law for fraud. The regional secretary of the Bullen was found guilty in a court of law for fraud. And we took a decision because the, this, the constitution says, if you've been found guilty for fraud, corruption or bribery in a court of law, it's not an allegation, it's not a rumor, he was found guilty in a court of law, then he must vacate. The NDC overruled that decision. The same NDC that decided now that I must be exp um, suspended, that NDC overruled the decision by saying, Jonathan Snayman, the regional secretary, can get his position back as the regional secretary, even if he's found guilty of fraud, because the, 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 the charge wasn't dealt with in three months, as the constitution say. Yesterday we've heard, I'm laughing because it's actually the age of madness, I think, Yesterday we've heard Comrade Fransman, which is not charged in a court of law, which was not found guilty in a court of law, that which a, a person went to the police station complained and the police decided in, in uh, Rustenburg not to prosecute and the NPA decided they not to prosecute. So there's a political hard hit, um, which, which hunt on it. So what, what we can confirm is the fact that what they were effectively able to do was to ensure that we are getting an environment going where it's actually not equality for all unless you're sitting on the side of a particular faction that wants to, 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 to see them. And yes, I'm a stumbling block in the Western Cape because if we go to a national conference, 2017, that conference happened, I will definitely not support Comrade Guedeman Tash to become the deputy president of, of, of the country, something that he lobbied quite a few in the Western Cape in the last couple of months around. I also want to confirm the fact that in January this happened, the constitution is clear, you must, the allegation must be put to you three months um, in, be, after the incidents happened, it's six, seven months thereafter and still, meaning it's unconstitutional, the bottom line is, I understand the political reason behind it. My focus is actually to say, whilst, whilst elephants are fighting in the room, it's the grass that suffer. Our focus must be, my call on Comrade Gwedi is, forget, let's not fight and DC people out of the ANC. Let's rather focus on the Koi and the Sun and the Griquas community that Comrade Gwedi insulted a couple of uh, months ago and a year ago. He must rather focus on the issues of affirmative action in a non-racial agenda so that those that are not black African can feel part. Af colored Indian Muslim must feel part that they are part of the being affirmed in our constitutional democracy. What Comrade Gwede rather must focus and get the comrades, um, um, the provincial secretary and others in the Western Cape, which was found guilty by the DC, the national DC, for assaulting one of the employees in his office. But guess what? He's in the office because he, he's sworn allegiance to Comrade Gwede. So as long as you for regime change in the ANC structures currently, you'll be fine. If you're against regime change, then clearly you'll be a target, and that I must accept. But my focus is the ground, it's the people, it's the branches, it's our constituencies. It is making sure that schools remain open. Farm workers are having in this country a very difficult time by way of the way the white um, farmers are treating them. We must deal with those issues. We must deal with the issues of land reform as well as the issues of land disposition of the Koya and the Sun. Those are the fundamental questions. In fact, we'll be issuing the statements of, the, of what was not heard by the NDC. Now, the NDC made a profounding point. They said in that statement, and you've just read it out, the NDC said that Fransman actually misled the public when he said he didn't receive the documents. I want now to say the NDC has lied when they said they've submitted all the relevant documents to it. And I am prepared to go into an engagement in writing and present all those facts publicly.
have been many examples of ANC members and top brass uh, criticizing the le leadership and in particular the ANC president but the NDC seems uh, does not seem to be taking action. Malema was expelled for criticizing the president and bringing the party into disrepute. Uh, in the past two weeks Jackson Mtembu has criticized the party leadership saying it should step down following Gordon's charges debacle and Motsekha has said the party uh, could not take collective responsibility for Zuma and those implicated in the state capture report. Do you believe there are double standards here in dealing with disciplinary issues and if so why? It's clearly why. There was a packaging a year ago. That's why I'm saying Comrade Mantash must say if what I've said that the NEC heard this issue in September by me last year, he was present, he was asked in that NEC to actually call in those people that wants to, to create faction in the Western Cape. He was asked by the NEC to in fact bring, bring those people that has put more than 10 million rand, and we've got the facts around that, more than 10 million rand to dislodge us in this province and to also make sure that they lobby for the dislodgement of, of the president at the NGC. Comrade Derek Hanekom, he smiles publicly, but he's possibly one of the political vultures that I've seen the last couple of six to eight months. Why do we say that? This is the comrade that said at the provincial conference in July last year, when there was a faction with T-shirts, when we said you must ban T-shirts of a faction, UID T-shirts, he said it's allowable. Secondly, he went into a situation, be, he became a witness at the integrity committee against France, man. But he was not in the car and he was not in Rustenburg and he was not in Sun City. How does he come involved in that? I've asked for the integrity committee, for Comrade Frenigin Wall and others, and I've asked for the SG, I want the affidavit or I want the transcript of Comrade Derek Hanekom at the Integrity Committee. Why are they hiding that? But it's the same Comrade Hanekom that actually went and wrote a letter in February, March this year on behalf of a foundation that Comrade President must go. So, so the plot has taken and the, we, we, we are uncovering every little step of that. Today, this Frenchman, in the next couple of months, the, it seems to me the SG is hell-bent to abuse his political office to try and take down anyone that would be an obstacle for him or a faction that's linked to him to rise into a national conference. The question is, what are we doing with the ANC? That's the strategic question. You asked the issue about fairness, consistency. I wrote to the SG. I said, here yeah, I am, not suspended the last 12 months, two, not facing a charge in a court of law, and I have not appeared after nine or ten months in a court. There is comrades that were for drunken driving the court of law, they've embarrassed the ANC through, through other matters. There's a comrade, Comrade Gwede himself. Last year, there was allegations in the public of sexual molestation or harassment. Did Comrade Gwede go to the Integrity Committee? Did he offer to, to, to step aside? Did he offer to go to the DC? No, he didn't. That is the irony of the of issues of factionism it's very clear to me now for the ANC to live in this country a faction around Comrade Gwede must actually um, come to the reality that they're breaking down the very engine room you can't sit in a situation where you come out of the NEC in February March you then proclaim everything is fine and a few months thereafter you say to people you're conscious and then come with greatest somersault. He should have sticked with this position a week ago. You can't have an issue that flip-flops on every little matter. It is wrong because he's breaking the very fiber of the ANC and the very coherence. Now, I've said this last year at our conference, and I, will say, I said it in this beginning of this year. If one wants to break down a household, attack the, the head of the household. If you want to break down a, 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 a church, attack the pastor. If you break down the ANC, you attack the president of the ANC and you are you using an internal strategy and an external strategy. I've, I've heard these things about state capture. Between Cape Town and Namibia, there's an N7. Between Cape Town and Gauteng, there's an N2 and an N1. The truth of the matter, I'm hearing the story that the Guptas has captured the state. The reality is, there's real state capturers. Let's follow the money. 
Let's look at who is actually in charge of the land and the ownership of the land. Let's focus on who's actually in charge of the fiscus in terms of where, who's got all the big, big contracts in the supply chain of South Africa. You'll definitely not find those that's being alleged is, is, has captured the state. You will find those that has in the previous dispensation um, received those benefits and those now. But so there is a convergence, and I call it the convergence model, of those within the organization, outside of the organization, and internationally. The attempt, they thought, if you take down the president, you take down him as the individual. It's not so. If you take down the president, you effectively break up the African National Congress, something which we've lived for. You can't run around having OR seminars in the month of October like Comrade SG has gone. You can't do that when in the same time you refuse to answer letters that we've sent to you, when you refuse to give the documents that we've asked you, when you refuse to say, I will be the first one to take responsibility and I'm offered to resign. Why don't Comrade Gwede rather resign? He can't because he's part of a gender to in fact make sure that they attempt to dislodge um, the leadership um, under per President Zuma from, from office come 2017. Now, should you, your appeal fail, will you remain loyal to the party or, uh, much like Malema and Holomisa, start your own party? The Cape region has done increasingly badly in each election. Why is that? I don't believe it's the values of the ANC that has done this wrong. It's not the values of the ANC that didn't write the letter back to me and that didn't give me the documents back. It's not the, it's not the historical objectives of the National Democratic Revolution that has done wrong. It is individuals that's abusive of the offices. Comrade SG came in in Polokwane essentially through factionalism into the office of the SG and we've accepted him afterwards. For nine and a half years, Comrade Maris Fransman was the Deputy Secretary of the ANC in the Western Cape. That was the time when we were growing. There was a dislodgement of Comrade Rasul after we've increased to 46%. Today there's a dislodgement of Maris Fransman after we've increased with 3% in 2014, from a low of 31 to a 34% increase. We've now moved back to 25%. It's very clear there's certain individuals that doesn't care about election results, governance in the communities, the plight of the poorest of the poor, as long as they can have self-serving positions in the office. I am not like that. Whether there's a position or not a position, the good thing is everyone in the country knows I was elected twice unopposed at conferences, meaning the base is strong. My call is on my supporters, let's not become disillusioned. Let's understand the politics for what it is. It is the age of madness in our country currently. And the only way, the, the buffer between stability and instability is the African National Congress. And we must continue to do that. Many people have asked me, why do I go through the process? Because a Democrat does go through processes like that. However painful it is, you must go through it. Um, there, was, there was very serious um, allegations and attempts in the past We've gone through all of these processes because that builds one. And the, the penny dropped for me when the religious community came to me in the beginning of this year and they said, we are praying. How do you find in the beginning of the year a comrade standing up and saying the religious community shouldn't pray for comrade Maris when he's in a time of need? They didn't say he's right. They didn't say he's wrong. But what they said, where there is, where there is pain, the religious community must care. So I think there is madness. What we must do is to say, how do we keep our focus on the bigger issues? And the bigger issues is, why did we get into the struggle? We got into the struggle for a non-racial society, for non-sexist, democratic and prosperous society. Why didn't they take Donovan Kluter's statement that actually said, if anyone is supposed to be accused of molestation, it's actually him. Why didn't they take that? No, they said they couldn't take it because it was not he didn't sign, he, he signed, he gave it to them, but they felt, for example, there was not, it wasn't a, a under oath done. Secondly, why didn't they take my submission that my representative took in there that said, here's all the problems. They couldn't do it because if they took all of those facts, how do you bring Venan's mother and then argue, and she argues, they are very credible. Did, did the DC actually go into the family? Did they actually realize there's possibly fraudulent activities of charges that was done against family members in that particular family? 
they say she actually left the university because of all the turmoil this year. Did they actually check if that's true or not? And I can confirm it is not true. I can also confirm how does the integrity committee members offer a bursary to a somebody that must come and testify against an ANC leader and then you offer the bursary. Was the bursary offered as a bribe? And therefore I've said there's things that's fatally flawed. The bottom line is by all means Franzman must go and I will not go anywhere. The only thing that I will do, I will stand firm on the side of justice on the side of the equality on issues and on the side of fairness. Clearly something that didn't happen. I hope that this whole exercise in the, in the future, we can learn from it and we will say never ever again, a comrade must endure this type of nonsense because of a factional battle um, that's, that's in turmoil in the ANC. That need to uh, be further investigated there. Lastly, before we let you go, Mr. Franson, can the ANC come back from the losses in the four main metros and local government election? I think what we must do is we must, there's a few important things. The top six of the ANC must sit down and I suggest not at the two layers, but must be in a relaxing atmosphere outside of, of the offices of positions. And the top six must reflect and say, how do we resolve these issues? And one of the first things to do is to say, Let is, let's actually honor the respect of the structure of the African National Congress. That's the first thing. Secondly, you can't have a situation when we lost a few kind of metros and after elections, the issue of the ANC stand up and say, we must blame the election formula. What are we saying to the voters? The voters are saying to us there's a credibility problem. The voters are saying to us there's definite issues that we didn't do right. So what we do require is we require back to basics. One of that is a more unified organization. A precondition for the success in the ANC is not fa factions. A precondition for the ANC is unity. Another precondition for success in the ANC is let's not abuse our officers to get rid of other comrades. Then there's four pillars that I believe. One is we must reconnect with communities and civil society across South Africa. Two, we must go on the massive listening campaign. One of the things that I'll be doing in George um, this weekend is a sense-making discussion with community leaders, with ANC structures, with Alliance comrades, and with the, the religious sector and other people and business to say what is happening in South Africa. And, and, and what is the current realities and how do we get out of the cock wire? So I think there's a sense-making discussion required over the next few months and we must identify issues to take to the policy conference of the ANC. And I don't know if I will still be there, if I'm going to be allowed to be in or out, because um, it seems to me even if you're being taken undemocratically out, like the attempt was to take Comrade President out, um, as they've done in Brazil, so, so even if through undemocratic means, those that doesn't have popular support will find other ways. So, but what we must do is to use the processes, the branches must. Everyone speaks about political education, but I think it's a political consciousness that's required. A consciousness to be respectful, a consciousness to be saying not things in an arrogant way. We've seen too much of that through the, through the SG's office the last couple of years. We must tread softly. Leadership responsibility is to tread softly. Leadership responsibility is to give hope to those that are hopeless. Leadership responsibility is to create an atmosphere that attracts people and not push people away. And I think that's my message. And, and that is something that I believe we must take forward. Yes, indeed. So I've been invited to different places in the country to come and, for example, reflect on some of these issues. I want to say a silver bullet was pushed on me. As I've said on the 26th of December, by that regional secretary that was convicted for fraud, that the NDC said it's fine, he can, he can serve in office, th that message said, in a message to me, and I've given that over to the authorities, that said, after the Sue, you are now the biggest factionist, you will see what we will do with you, soon you will become the biggest embarrassment for the ANC, and guess what? This year was a very embarrassing moment for me. Those that knows me well knows I do lots of things possibly not right. But one thing that I will never do is to abuse women. And, 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 and clearly they've gone for a target I can't put on record. 
There is at least five people that came to me and said they've been offered. I already raised this in March and April. That has been offered money to write affidavits. That's not true. There's people that has already written and that brought this. There's, there's something in the, the statement of yesterday, a person called John Pretorius. And that person has come on the 15th of August to me and said he wants to confess. And that is on record. record. He wants to confess what they've tried to do to me in the beginning of this year. So that we can deal with. But no one must believe that if you do this to a comrade that served the organization in serious positions for so many years, at least 26, 27 years um, in senior positions, you mustn't, and was at some stage the youngest um, leadership in the PC. If you do that to a comrade like that, imagine the mistrust that you create amongst everyone else. Thank you so much for joining us here on Morning Prime.